between the West Indies and South Africa. This one coming from Kingsmead in Durban. Now, at the weekend, the West Indies did what they haven't done throughout a test series, and the whole tour, in fact, they beat South Africa in a match. The series is tied at 1-1, thanks to their 43-run victory in East London. Now, going into this one, some changes in the lineups, not too surprisingly, but South Africa really wholesale changes there. Six players coming into this one. Herschel Gibbs will be opening in place of Gary Kirsten. Dale Benkenstein gets to go at this level. He's meant to be an exciting young player. And we also see a uh, one-day international debut for Andrew Hall. Pat Simcox comes back in for Nicky Bowyer. Steve Elworthy's in. And uh, Sean Pollock pulled out just 10 minutes before the start of play with a sore throat. Let's have a look at the West Indies lineup now. Just the one change there. And Philo Wallace, who's had a dreadful time at opener, has made way for Junior Murray. There had been suggestions that Brian Lara would be opening up, but uh, it looks as if he'll come in at Black Stahansi Cronier winning the toss. And in sweltering conditions, your commentators, Tony Cozier and Dave Richardson. Up. That'll be a boundary. Shortish side here at uh, King's Mead. And King just drifting on the legs and beautifully put away for four by Cullinan. Nothing much more than a, a push towards the leg side from Cullinan. Just rolling the wrist, keeping it down, placing it beautifully. And that's the sign of a good betting pitch. Ball coming onto the bat beautifully. Fine shot, it's found the gap and timed it really well. Arthurton is arguably the fastest man in the West Indies team, but they'll come back quite comfortably 4-3. Durban in the middle of a dry period and the, there's a lot of run on the golf courses around Durban, but also the outfield here at Kingsmead should be particularly fast today. Dave Richardson getting in his excuse for his high scores on the golf course very early in the commentary today. That's very well struck. That's a tremendous blow. He really got into that. He saw it from the time it left the bowler's hand. Remarkable stroke by Herschel Gibbs. Well, Gibbs obviously not thinking the same on the same wavelength as myself. There was a time where he used to be able to be tied down, bowling just short of a length around off stump. And obviously he's aware of that. Counteracts it with a, a pull shot of the front foot. That's a magnificent stroke again. It's gone for six. A repeat of the one which we saw earlier. This time it's gone all the way. That is an incredible shot in a way. It's almost a sweep of a quick man, and that takes incredible talent. Not orthodox by any means, and perhaps slightly risky. But there are not many batsmen in South Africa, and certainly not world cricket, who can get away with a shot like that. Pass, fine leg. That's the danger when you don't have a man back. If it goes that fine, it's going to beat that man inside the restricting area. Well, before I comment on the delivery, I'd like to see the line. But uh, that one, in fact, drifting down the leg side, and uh, Brian Laura can't do much about that. He's now going to have to revert to the fine leg in the orthodox position. Remarkable stroke again. Gone all the way. Well, Gibbs is certainly not that wide. It's, and not that short, to be honest. And he just hits it with a more or less straight bat, 45 degrees, over cover. That's, oh, put down. About to say, that's out. And of all people, Carl Hooper puts it down. Probably the safest pair of hands in world cricket today well a slip catcher's goal this is a cuckoo isn't it it just loops at him nice height solid all the way and it just goes to show nobody's perfect we all put some down it's amazing how you put down what seems to be the simplest well 
terrific bit of bowling. A very competent bit of batting at the, at the death there. Never asked for a block hole ball, where was it? He falls over and still gets a run. Take him out! Let's go. Out! Off the back of the bat! Turn the bat too soon, so uh, Hooper being introduced inside this first 15 overs has worked for the West Indies. You've got to give them credit for that. Give some credit to that young man too. He really entertained this crowd. He'll be furious he's got out. Well, I give some credit here to the captain, Sir Brian Lyro, who had the conviction as well as the foresight to bring Hooper on quickly, early, within the first 15 overs. But he'd seen how Hooper had bogged down the South African right-handers throughout this series. 49 for one. Lance Klusner makes his way to the crease, so uh, in the role of a pinch hitter, as it's, it's become known. That might be out of the ground. For a fraction of a second, it looked as if it might be. It went very high. It looked as if it might have been a slight top edge. But uh, I was saying on the pitch report for the spinners, they're not big boundaries, these. Oh. Oh, Given that a belt, and that'll be four runs. There's no one at the uh, sort of backward point and he's in the air and safe between the two boundary riders out on that offside. Well, the comment has been made already that the West Indies have done their homework with Lars Klusner. They tucked him up and quite sensibly because of that left leg going outside leg stump. But here, this ball wide and an easy slash for Lars Klusner into the gap behind backward point. That's Savage, he falls for four. Found the gap beautifully, beat the short man, four runs. Well, just the start he didn't want. Darrell Cullen an extremely quick on the pull, and uh, Carl Hooper at, uh, at mid-wicket, one thought he might have just stopped that, even though it was going like a rocket. Went almost straight through him. Beautifully timed by Darrell Cullen. Now he's hit that hard, that's four. Has hit the ball very hard with that big heavy bat of his. It's the first opportunity that he gets outside that off stump, a bit of width off it, and he's got the freedom to swing those arms and, as you say, that bat. That's interesting. I mean, where was that going to bounce to? Hit a footmark and spin back on? I don't think you can just catch it. Ian Healy might have appealed. Kiramore. I think as Darrell caught it, he suddenly realised, I shouldn't have done that. You don't know. You can say, now, there's, there is a discussion. Darrell saying it's nowhere near the wicket. In fact, there has been an appeal. And he's been given out, handle ball. Well, that won't be a popular decision, certainly, but it's something that Daryl Cullinan won't do again. Here we go. It's a totally innocent thing. He doesn't think it's going to bounce on the wicket. He hasn't knocked it away. But David Richardson's quite right. He suggested that might have landed in one of the footholes or where the batsman makes his mark and spun back onto the stumps. Then he might have been able to stop it with his bat. But I think that he's done that without a great deal of thought, uh, sort of thing you'd do in the net, throw the ball back to the bowler, and the West Indies have taken advantage of it, and it won't be a popular move. It's crisply hit in the air, it's safe as well, Arthurton attacks the ball from the deep. Well, that was... Uh, Good running in to pick up the ball. 
but really the throw is uh, sloppy. He's very quick, his Keith Arthur. You know, he gets to the ball, attacks it. And the throw could be better. Look, it's all over the place. You need to be better. You need to be more disciplined. Some of them should try bowling at the death like this at batsman on a flat pitch. It's not funny, I can tell you. There's no fun in it when you're a bowler. And there's an example. Beautifully hit away by Cronier, giving himself room by stepping aside. And... Uh, free the arm so you could hit that square of the wicket beautifully played it wasn't such a bad ball that was it length ball off stump which maybe just outside he just played it late used the pace a little bit of room made it himself and well it's four runs and, and that's why you need the fielders to be really on top form oh that's four a despairing dive by ridley jacobs and this is uh, Cronier working really well here. He stepped away the previous delivery. So now McLean's fired it in there. He's gone inside and out and flicked it away for four. Well, that's pure inexperience by McLean. He's been outfought by Cronier. Look, he thinks I'll follow him. And then it's outside the pad. What he really should have done is bowl dead straight and full Yorker. Oh, Arthur and thought it was out. Yeah, I must uh, speak to Keith tomorrow morning and see what rules he plays under in Nevis. I'm from the Leeward Island. Playing a shot about nine inches outside of stump. They must have different rules there. And a different it. umpires. That's beautifully played by Cronier. Ambrose will do well here and has done so. Good see. Now, Rudy Jacobs has had a few awkward throws to deal with, but he got himself into a silly tangle fielding this throw. And this is so nicely played by Cronier inside Ambrose. He has to run hard. He knows he's got a spell coming up as well. That looks to be out. Yep, it's swept it straight at the man. It looked so simple and easy. Wasn't sure if he did it into the ground. He set, swept it straight at him. So I suppose he could be a little bit unlucky. He might have missed him by a yard and he'd gone rocketing for four. So Rhodes goes, caught on the sweep. Arthurton gets the wicket and he's headed straight down the throat of Junior Murray at a short fine leg. And the end of the over sees Rhodes depart for 11 from 14 balls. 221 for five. The KwaZulu Natal captain Dale Benkenstein comes out to join the South African captain Hunty Cronier in his first limited over international. Mm -hmm. In the ground, mid off is under it, but it's over him. Six. He struck that very sweetly indeed. 51 for Cornier. Also very few balls and this six that he hits over Midoff, I think Midoff can be thankful he, he doesn't carry to him and goes over his head because it swerved as it was flying to him. Yes. <laughs> 50 and just 39 deliveries from Cicronier. And again. That's halfway up the stand. Cicronier at his best. Great stuff. And it brings up the 250 with four overs remaining. Action replay. ball and Grenier spotted it but then hit it sweetly to mid wicket so West Indies get a very important wicket in terms of the last few overs here brilliant bowling from Ambrose he, he may have spotted it but too late in a way he was intending to smash it over and on again what managed to adjust and time it fairly well in the end but beaten really by the by the change of pace from Ambrose 
Mark Boucher. So that we can wicket keeper on his way in. One more look at the wicket. Out! Caught behind by Ridley Jacobs and this is a, a splendid spell from Kirtley Ambrose. A third over of this spell and that's his second wicket for just nine runs. That extra little bit of pace from Ambrose, I think, beating uh, Benkenstein. You'll see his left foot nowhere near the pitch of the ball because he's trying to hit it as hard as he can. And Ambrose has just a little bit extra class. Finds the edge. Disappointment for Benkenstein, gone for 10, but anything goes at the end of a one-day inning. 2.52 for 7. <laughs> his debut today, Andrew Hall. Finding the gap. Cool toss. But he does it well. A full toss and a soft dismissal. How is it that sometimes the full toss just deceives you for a moment? Jacobs quickly to run out from behind the stumps. So now eight down, South Africa. Mark Boucher leaves shaking his head. Knee high full toss, and as you say, they often look quite dangerous in one day cricket, especially when you're trying to hit across the line as he was, trying to pierce that gap again between uh, square leg and uh, back to square leg. 261 for eight. Number 77, Patrick Simcox. That's a beautiful strike from Andrew Hall. Beautiful strike. That'll get the mid-off back. He said it a little bit earlier. What he had to get right was the placement. And he's done just that. misses and is run out. Well that will irritate him a bit I'm sure because um, you always hate getting run out and, uh, even if it is the last ball of a one day international. Full mark to the bowler, he follows him, gives him no room to hit him over mid off and well done Ridley Jacobs who's really Continues to have a great series with the gloves. Well, it was a slightly slow start to the innings, it must be said. Not much was going on for 25 overs, and then handled ball, a bit of controversy. Although, to be totally honest, I think uh, Lara wasn't really too much of a villain in appealing for that one. Well, whatever, it prompted the South Africans, and in particular their captain, Hansi Cronier, into life. His 58 or 42 balls, quite brilliant, and it really accelerated the run rate. Although at the end, the West Indies bowled well, mainly Kirtley Ambrose yet again, with good bowling from Arthurton and Hooper this time out meant that 274 was perhaps 20 runs, runs less than you thought South Africa might get. Let's have a look at those bowling figures, and it'll illustrate the point. Two for 31 off 10. Brilliant once again from Kirtley Ambrose. King this time was expensive. Hooper, slightly expensive, but four wickets. And uh, Arthurton doing a good job there. McGarrell and McLean, I'm afraid, a little bit too expensive at this level of the game. Well, the equation is quite straightforward then for the West Indies. 275 for victory. It'll be interesting to see exactly what their batting lineup looks like, and we'll find out after this break. Well, not a particularly good over from Elworthy, and the last ball just finding the gap through the offside for four. 
Chandler Ball wants uh, strapping for his bat. Seemed uh, to be in pretty good order for that shot. Beautiful shot. Wrapped away. Superb stroke by Junior Murray to get off the mark. That's the square cut played in the approved fashion. Right on top of it and timed beautifully. Well, Andrew Hall finding that uh, the margin for error at this level is uh, not great. This ball, he would have thought in normal provincial cricket wasn't a bad one. But Junior Murray cutting it away superbly. Well struck. Deliberately got under it and hit it over point. Had the whip. This one rockets past Jacques Callas, who's uh, in there at silly point, 15 meters away. Say he bends his knee. It went high over Jacques Callas in the end. Just wide. What an effort. Well, he talked about the Dolphins. Fielder out there isn't one. Herschel Gibbs plays for Western Province. But uh, with that, he could well have been a Dolphin. Well, we've seen some uh, incredibly brilliant catches from him during the, the Test Series particularly. And this time, he almost seemed to over, overbalance slightly as he went for it and then had to dive off balance. Tommy anticipating very well, but it's got too much legs on it. It's into the boundary, so another four for Murray. Slightly overpitched, and once again, no margin for error for a new bowler here at this level. Junior Murray giving himself room there, foot going outside leg stump before crashing it to the offside. Over the top, well struck by Chanderpaul, another boundary. Quite a frenzied start here for the West Indies. Yes, and we're seeing the uh, South African reserve strength being put under pressure by the savage attack. Deliberate shot with the limitations on the field placing. And he's got that away as well. He's in pretty good touch, this fellow. Yes, once he gets going, he's extremely difficult to dislodge. And uh, this was a gift for him. The bouncer wasn't high enough, was just in the right place. And uh, he just carries it away here, times it beautifully, and it's a one-bounce ball. In the air, that's down towards the boundary, that's gone. He's caught it, but he's over, is he? He hasn't held on to it. That's a superb piece of thinking by the fielder on the third man boundary. Ampa Diedrich was asked for the television replay. This is an incredible piece of cricket. Look, it was a loose shot. Good bowling by Steve Elworthy. It goes high in the air. Andrew Hall gets under it, but he's running back very fast to the boundary and has to flick it in, but he, not in time. You see, he's touching the boundary rope. That's going to be a four. He tries to flick it back to save the boundary, but uh, I don't think he'll be, it will be given to him. As soon as the umpire hears, I think you'll see the batsman change around. Well, they're not. As far as I'm concerned, no, it's six. He's got it through. Too many men on the left side, not enough on the off. And a bad delivery from Simcox, well put away. So the West Indies raised their 50 off six overs and it's been a tremendous start for them in pursuit of their 273 to win the match. Now that was as quick a delivery as we've seen all night. In fact, I, I would venture to say it was far quicker than anything we saw from the West Indies and it really almost took Junior Murray's head off. Uh, not above the level of the shoulder. We saw Rion King deliver one in the South African innings early on. Just a marginal call, but it looked to be below the level of the shoulder. Kings was above and was given a no ball. If it does go above the level of the shoulder, it will be a no ball. Pinned him, and that really hit him hard. A very, very quick delivery. Signaled no ball by Wilf Diedrichs, because as Tony has just said to you, 
Uh, it was above shoulder high. Hit him on the ear, and he's feeling for blood. He's obviously shaken because uh, no matter how good these uh, helmets are, those things hurt enormously. He's late on it. You can see very, very late on it. Manages to turn his, his head, and thankfully, because uh, he's not wearing a visor, this one hitting him straight on the earpiece. That's a fine edge and a bit of pad and four more. That's the only danger, having the fine leg up there. You can't stray it anywhere near middle stump. Yes, if you bowl too straight, which this is, not so much going down, it's just straight from the angle. Pitch is on, but then from the wide angle of delivery, it's actually going down any sort of nick. The finer, the better. That's a magnificent shot. Beautiful. Well, it's just a batsman in good touch, isn't he? He's confident, positive about everything. Not having to think too much about it instinctively. It's on a lens. Love it over the top. That's a batsman in form. It's not a, a natural shot for... Uh, under Paul, who for yes? Bottom edge, four. I think Hansi's got to change the bowling at Steve Alworthy. I'm surprised he didn't before this over. He's not got his ball badly. It's just that with these new rules that we've had for a few years, you've got to keep everybody in the circle but two, two men catching. You know, you really only got seven fielders. Four. Well, that has been the most fantastic innings. 50 to Chander Paul. In 40 balls. I wouldn't have thought it was that many. That's up in the air. Somebody should catch it. And they do. Andrew Hall. Well, I have to say that's uh, very good aggressive cricket from Kluzner, but not exactly very smart cricket from Young Chanderpaul. They pushed him into that shot by knocking it in short at Junior Murray and Chanderpaul, whacking it in short, made him commit himself. You see, he's out of control, loses the bat, and it should have been an easy catch. He wasn't in the end look he had to just stretch for it the main thing is it stuck in the hand so Brian Lara has come in at number three now that'll be four leg buys because he was taking evasive action yes Robin's right it, it does seem a bit uh, harsh on the bowler doesn't it though but that's the rule. So he got himself tucked up. This could be interesting if he hits. Now, he's given up without even asking. So, there you go. All part of getting beaten around a little bit. And when he was happy to get up the other end, he didn't do the running properly. Wonderful throw from Klusner. Well, it's a good job Lance Klusner did come back on the field. He's got a wicket by shaking them up, but now he's got a run out. Should have got him on earlier. Oh, another, another excellent decision by the umpire. Didn't need to send for the slow motion replay. Well, that'll be four because there's no one down on the cover boundary and even though it's the 16th over and the fielding restrictions can be lifted an illustration of Cronier's intensity and an and intention to keep the aggression up just three men out oh talk about being hit it's in the air Boucher takes the catch big appeal Hooper is going and 
the no ball hasn't been called and a third wicket to South Africa via the aggressive route this is phenomenal stuff well the only doubt about this is going to be whether it was about shoulder height or not again an involuntary movement pushing the hands out of the ball just to protect yourself I think there's the, the answer isn't it Dave because it hit the gloves and he's walked hit the gloves in front of his chest now no uh, this is the what are we into the 18th over two slips three in the covers two on the on side and that'll be four because there is no one on that boundary but that'll happen when you've got fields like this yes and that also having to come around back over the wicket now the tendency is you're going to go across the left hand and allow them a bit of width outside that off stub and that's the problem you remember Alan Donald and Brian Laura out bowling aggressively straight at him it should wide of slip and to the third man boundary for four going across the left hander in one day cricket that's often a problem only one slipping position that'll be four more runs and Kenny how the uh, West Indian batsmen this evening have uh, sparred away they look uncomfortable for the most part other than that dashing start but when they've hit the ball it's gone straight to the boundary and that's out caught mid on so it's all working Arterton looks around to find out whether that's a no ball so this line of attack has been successful 125 for four now we saw Keith Arthurton smiling at the end of the last over but here he's tucked up and uh, splashes the ball up to uh, Hansi Cronier fine bowling by Jacques Callas perfect pitch and uh, the West Indies are 125 for four pulled away by Lara four well, not very short, but a slightly slower delivery from Andrew Hall. And uh, he soon has realized that uh, the standard at this level is uh, quite considerably higher than that he's been used to. Oh, that could go to the boundary. Hall is chasing. Oh, see. Clatter. Another balance to my word. He's not short of effort tonight is Andrew Hall. Also a smile. Into the over 155 for four. Oh, that's out. Parcher takes the catch. Cornier is the man who gets the key player, Brian Lara. Induces the edge. And Parcher takes a good catch. I wonder if that's the match. A smile for one, a growl on the face of the other captain. Well, a little bit of a gift wicket. Fairly innocuous, medium face, off stump, and he just glided it as if he was giving catching practice. He'll be a little angry with himself for one captain, and the anti Cronier will be thrilled a bit. Edge out. Jacobs goes. Cronier strikes again. And surely with that wicket, the task for the West Indies grows enormously. Cronier gets Jacobs. It's 170 for six. Well, I thought this is a little beauty. It just nips away from him, love. Just bounces. See the height. And carries comfortably to the keeper. Little, little nip off the pitch. And little bounce, but just enough for the informed Ridley Jacobs. Beautifully bold. Oh dear. 170 for six. That's gone miles 
up in the air. That's a fantastic catch. Joe Cullis, the catcher. It all looked pretty simple, but trust me, that went miles in the air. Took a lot of judgment. There is some wind out there. Well caught, Jack Cullis. He's failed with a bat. He's come out and bowled almost the, probably the match winning spell with the ball. And now that's not enough. He takes, well, one of the highest catches. I would have been shouting yours, that's for sure. Keep simple, played a good job. Played a good innings, did a good job is what I'm trying to say. Court colours, both on here 22. West Indies seven down now for 177. Up in the air, Boucher under it. Another wicket falls. Callis takes his third. McLean goes. And I think that's just about cleaned it up. <laughs> yes, and uh, McLean questioning the, the, the umpire's decision as to whether it was uh, too high or not. That's been a critical factor in this tactic adopted by South Africa. Hopefully the umpires did give it uh, true, due consideration. But I think there, McLean's a tall man, that's about chest height and uh, quite correct in the decision. Top late. Ambrose just uh, nudges it down towards fine leg for four. Leg by signaled uh, by the umpire. I think Ambrose might be a bit upset with that. But it certainly raced towards the boundaries if it came off the bat. Let's have a look here. Well, that's a pretty hardy blow by Curtly Ambrose. He gets it over the boundary, ready to hit that pretty hard. Yes, and when you see hitting like this, you realize just what an important job the South African quick bowlers did in the middle of the innings. When they got the breakthrough and they took the wickets, full marks to Cronier as well, because if, if they had batsmen had got West Indies close, on this wicket, I think that uh, the likes of Ambrose McLean could speed them through. What is fresh in this wicket? Because it certainly wasn't like this uh, during the daytime. Has there been dew here? Something that's uh, brought it to life? I think there's not as much dew as best in the house. Whether it's the humidity that just settles on the wicket. match it from Ambrose. the responsibility of trying to stem the tide early on giving the ball in the first 15 overs. Got hit for a few boundaries, but then did tighten up things up a little bit. Have to hurry. He's time. Not for the first time. He's come back for the second and well before the television replay. It's been thrown out. But it's been thrown out. I think this is on this occasion. It's not the road. It's not the road. But he was struggling. And there was no way he was going to get one. Long way out. I 
and King is remaining with him, he just running himself up, Ambrose is once again just running himself up, taking on the South African fielders. Well, in the end, the victim of that vicious attack by the South Africans, they really just shook him and uh, he couldn't really last the pace. Run out for 24 or 40. Cannibal was quite brilliant, but he can't do it every time with a big score. Lara showed a few glimpses that he's returning to his best, but really, Hansi Cronier, he's a master tactician. He told them to bowl fast and short. It was really quite aggressive, I must say. I don't know whether that had anything to do with it. He's out for two, bowled by.